Sullier has so many features on her, and it's almost impossible for me to be there to show everybody around the boat. So this video is just my way of demonstrating the features of Sullier to you. I know Sullier from bow to stern, and I have spent 10 years improving her and refining her. Our philosophy on the boat has always been, if we meet something that needs improvement, we improve it. If we have a problem, we not only solve the problem, but we try to put something in place so the problem will never occur again. So it has been a story of continual refinement until we think we have developed probably the most perfect cruising boat you can have. But not only that, but a boat that has crossed both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. It is not a sales video as such. It is a video that explains to any prospective buyer the detail of the boat. So any prospective buyer that comes to see Salier would already have a great understanding of just what the boat offers. We have divided the video into different sections for different parts of the boat. So now, let's get into the detail of Salier. As you watch the video, if you have any questions, please note them down and just email us. The email address is given at the end of the video. We'll start with a tour of the external features. We had this ladder specially made for Salier. It was the first one that St. Francis produced. You simply lower it using the Jenica halyard. We found this really useful for setting the kayaks by, for scubaing, or just for sitting there getting cool, because underneath those tramps, Leslie would often sit there with her feet in the water just to be cool. And you can even lower the ladder right into the water so the first few steps are underneath the water. It just takes two or three minutes to deploy and put back again. This is what the steps look like when they're up. The trampolines are held by both cord and elastic to give a really comfortable feel to them. And one of Leslie's and my favorite places are the tramps. And there are two types of covers we have for the boat. This is the solid cover, which you can adjust. It is held up by the Screecher or Genoa halyard and can be adjusted just how you want. There is also another cover, which lets 50% of the light through. The tramps are large. In order to minimise chain snagging, we spent almost two months designing and redesigning the inside of the anchor locker. And eventually we ended up with this design here. The galvanised chain is brand new and has actually never been used, not even once. We also diverted the overflow from all the fuel tanks into this small container. This way we could detect when the tanks were full. 
In addition to that, we fitted much larger pipes between the different sections of the fuel tanks so that as you filled one tank, it would quickly fill the other. Otherwise, we were finding that you could never fully fill the tanks because you thought it was full, but five to ten minutes later, they'd equalised and you found you hadn't filled it. Plus, we had seven-inch inspection hatches fitted to all the fuel tanks. This meant that you could get inside the tanks and clean them all should you ever need to do so. In addition, we fitted a hot and cold shower so that we could shower when we came up the ladder between the tramps. Over the last few years, all the hatches have been replaced and none of them leak. As standard, they are all fitted with Ocean Air blind system. The two kayaks called Splish and Splash are included with the boat. The bowsprit is telescopic. Over a kilowatt of solar panels with the expensive German walk-on panels between the other glass panels so that you can walk around and have maintenance etc on the roof. There are six MPPT controllers to control the different groups of solar panels. Having once had an incident in the BVI where another sailor just did not understand the rules of the road and we found our horn volume to be ineffective, we decided to put it right by installing a decent air horn. Now heading to the stern, it should be noted that the walkways are really wide and safe. This not far from new 11 foot rib together with its 20 horsepower Yamaha engine come with the boat. The engine has had round about four or five hours use and a rib cover is also supplied. The rib has protection for when you're dragging it onto a shore. There is a hot and cold bathing shower on the stern, as well as another hot and cold shower positioned in the anchor locker and can be used when you're coming up the steps from the tramps. When in the marina, you can connect the water supply directly to the boat and take the pressure from the water to supply all the system instead of using the pump and taking water from the tanks. This is a huge starboard locker and we'll take a look at what it contains. By the way, the port equivalent is mainly the water maker. This raw water intake supplies the generator and we had the design modified by fitting a non-return valve into it so that it always has water in it and this means that the generator when started has an immediate supply of raw water rather than having to wait to pump from the sea to fill the raw water chamber. This is the antenna tuner for the SSB radio. The ground loop system for the SSB radio is also in this locker. This stern locker has storage for four diving tanks, but it's not simply a matter of storage. You actually fill the tanks here and you fill all four at once. This is done by a special hose that connects to the outlet here and the amount of air going in is controlled by this knob here. This all comes from an electric diving compressor that is in the port bow. There's hardly any noise when you're using it and it fills up your tanks right by where you're going to use them. This lead can be connected to the rib as part of our security system. The boat has an extensive security system. This is the standard pull-out swimming ladder. We had extra large winches fitted and in fact all the winches on Sillier are electric. The only winch that's not electric as such is on the mast, but even then we are providing a right angle drill to make it electric. So even raising and lowering the screecher or the Janica is electric. This huge fridge locker in the cockpit is so big you can actually get inside it. For huge trips, like crossing the Atlantic, which was for us a 29 day journey, where we by the way averaged 200 miles a day throughout the whole trip, that kept all our vegetables fresh for that whole period. It really is an invaluable locker and you can set the temperature to what you want. Solier has a range of safety devices. Here we have the Moby system and also a throwing line, a 100 foot throwing line, which we found to be most effective. In fact, so effective, we made a video on it. Now 
Now taking a look at the controls in the cockpit. This remote unit wirelessly controls both engines, the anchor and the bow thruster. The bow thruster pops out of the hull and pops back again when it's finished. It's an expensive luxury, but it does mean that with just two people on board, it makes a number of the operations on the boat much simpler. Here we have the manual override bilge controls, the blower controls, a 12 volt outlet and the instrument light. And by the way, we've upgraded the blowers quite considerably from the original. Here are the light controls for the roof lights in the cockpit cover, and these are new LEDs that it's controlling, along with a control for the light above the helm seat, which can change colour and be dimmed to suit your requirements, along with the floor lighting, which is all around the cockpit, and for that matter, throughout a lot of the boat. Below those light switches are the volume controls for the cockpit speakers. Here we have the GME EPIRB that automatically deploys when it's submerged or can be manually deployed. The last thing we wanted to compromise on was a life route and therefore we bought a professional one, a Viking self-writing eight-man life raft and we also ensured we had the right things inside it because we were there when it was repacked for service. There are two of these extremely large cupboards under the seats in the cockpit. The two most popular places in the cockpit are these beds on either side. All the seat covers can be removed and machine washed. The cockpit table can be lowered and raised it can also be flipped over to a much smaller table, of course, but it is made out of solid bamboo. And we did this because we use this table a lot and it's going to get marked. And so the logic behind it is we can just rub it down. And indeed, every year or two, we do rub it down and just re-oil it. That's all we do. And that's the idea of it. Inside the saloon is a highly polished table that we have kept as new because we put a protective cover over it. But here in the cockpit, we just had to be more practical. Well, of all the things we show you, this is the only optional extra on the boat, and it's a four-man hooker diving system. It's brand new and unused, and lives under that cushioned seat. In the cockpit, there are two floor lockers. In this one, we store some flat fenders along with three inflatable fenders and a spare anchor. In fact, there are three anchors with the boat. There's the Rockna 40 kilogram, there's a fortress anchor full size for the boat and a small fortress anchor. We could never understand why so many sailing boats had such hard and comfortable seats. So on Sullier, we wanted comfort and installed this very expensive stid seat. It's just had all its cushions replaced at a cost of over 3,000 US dollars. It's a highly adjustable seat. We designed the stainless steel barbecue so that it could turn on its own axis 360 degrees, as well as turn around that pillar 360 degrees. This allows you to position it well away from the cushions or wherever you want so you can avoid oil splatter, etc. It is gas powered from the same gas supply as the galley. We have updated all electronics on Sully Air to the B&G system. This we found to be a far better system for a sailing boat than the one we had. These screens can be used for video input. We have a mast video for when you're picking up a buoy or when you're berthing in a marina. They can be used for obviously charts on both the radar. It has the new um, solid state radar system and it also has forward sonar and an extra sonar for the extra deep work because when we were in the Atlantic, we had to pick up a current at a fairly deep depth that we know followed a contour. So we needed a sounder that could go pretty deep to pick up and follow that contour. So we installed one. The bow thruster control controls a bow thruster that comes out of the port hull. When it's not being used, it simply comes back in. So it is always enclosed and therefore 
because it's in the dark and enclosed, it never gets any growth on it and stays clean. There are three programmable Triton control heads. The anchor control controls 100 metres of galvanised chain that we've only just fitted and has never been used. It can not only measure the amount of anchor chain out, but it can even automatically stop, slow down, deaccelerate and stop to position your anchor perfectly. This is a handy autopilot control. You can control the autopilot from the screens because they're completely integrated with the screens. But it is very handy to have this control because you can make very quickly minute adjustments to the autopilot, etc., just to the touch of a button. In addition to the two 80 amp alternators fitted on the engines as standard, we have also fitted two 350 amp alternators powered by flat belt systems. And that has enabled us to have such flexibility of power because we have over a kilowatt of solar power in addition to a nine kilowatt generator and the twin 350 amp alternators. With the lithium batteries, which can take a charge of up to the home capacity, so up to 800 amps an hour, we can really shove in a lot of charging. The result of all this is Leslie no longer has to ask me, can she put a hairdryer on, etc. Because on Sullier, we can renew power into the batteries so quickly and we can drain them so much further if we need to. And we can always top up by one system or the other. We even use air conditioning when underway, when we're actually motoring on one engine. From the left, those two first controls simply switch on and off those alternators. The control on the right here controls the loud navigation alarm. And we had this fitted because when you're cruising on a long trip and people are on watch at night, they can easily doze off. You know, you have to be careful. And the normal sort of level of alarm from the system did not wake up anybody. But this loud alarm tends to wake up the boat. So Leslie it will be woken up if I've missed something. We often just set radar limits and put the loud alarm on. And if we don't take manual action in time, the loud alarm will go off. And it alerts the other person that someone on watch has dozed off. This is simply the remote control for the searchlight. There is another one in the saloon helm. From left to right, the first control is the windscreen wiper. The second one, the windscreen washer. The third one is that really loud air horn. And the fourth one are spready lights. And we have had some really good German spreader lights fitted. We had to import them because we wanted really strong lights. And it's like daylight on the boat when we put those on. And the last control is the electric Genoa. So you can unfurl your Genoa or furl it up again by simply pressing that button in either direction. Here we have the ICOM handset for the VHF. And of course on that you can control um, sound signals on a number of things including intercom and communicating with someone on the bow. There's also a wireless autopilot control, a little handset, that actually is stored in the saloon helm. And, of course, you can put all of this system, these screens, onto an iPad. You can transmit all the signals and so on onto an iPad. So there's a lot of versatility in the system. Engine controls are hydraulic and you have a leather-covered helm wheel. The floor level lights not just in the cockpit, but throughout the boat. Even the helm seat here has a heat vent coming from the two diesel heaters, one in each hull. These heaters have vents right throughout the boat. Both the cockpit winches can be controlled from either side, so one person can control both winches at the same time. And the switch to the left of the winch button is for controlling the electric Genoa. Now let's head inside and take a look at the starboard hull. There are extensive cupboards right throughout the boat and the master cabin is no different. All the furniture in Solier is built into the boat. It's not assembled externally and then simply pushed in. As many production boats are, it is built into the boat and it's all bamboo veneer.
the two 12 volt fans are slightly out of camera shot. And like all the cabins, the saloon, and even the cockpit, there are heating vents from the hot air diesel heating system. Three of the cabins on board have drop-down TV systems that include a DVD player. These are the ensuite heads, complete with a shower and sits bath. The escape hatches both have a security guard to prevent criminals coming inwards, but these security guards can be disabled in seconds by yourself. This is a brand new washing machine that we fitted this year. In this cupboard, we tend to hang all our outdoor clothing. Almost all our cupboards are fitted with small bar heaters so that we can keep the cupboards warm when there's say condensation etc and we've never suffered from it because of that. This is actually a shower but we put a rail in it and we use it to keep our wet scuba things which we can wash with fresh water at any time and have them drain away and dry. This starboard stone cabin was our video studio, a bit like an office, all in nice bamboo furniture. And what we have done is we have covered this up to form a standard cabin. We have not put the mattresses in because you may want to choose to have two singles or one large bed. It's really up to the new buyer what they want here. But they could also take the cladding away and return this cabin to an office. All the AC sockets in the boat can have the inserts changed over to multiple international types. On both engines, there is easy access to the front of the engine for checking fan belts and things like that in addition, of course, to extensive accents from the top, which will be under the mattresses. Again, there are extensive cupboards. These three cupboards provide the option of being removed and having an extra berth put in there. This is a quick walk through the starboard hull. And now for the porthole. The stern cabin is similar to the other cabins, with a television, with fans, with diesel heating vents, and so on. On the left, the first thing you come to is the heads and shower unit. This is the unit that people, when they're visiting us, when we have guests on board, use, because it doesn't involve passing through any bedrooms. And we thought this is the best way to do it, rather than make it en suite, which was the option with that cabin. This is a fridge, which we have a bamboo front fitted to. The bamboo front can be slid out if you ever need to replace a fridge and put on to a new fridge. There is a large deep freeze which makes it all together, including the cockpit and the saloon, a total of three fridges and a deep freeze. The port stone cabin bed is identical to the master cabin bed. 
This is the ensuite heads. Sullier comes equipped with many thousand dollars worth of spurs. All sorts of things from sensors to a spare prop. You name it, we pretty well have a spare for it. And now for the saloon. We replaced the ice maker, which again has had very little use. We redesigned the steelware here so the table could be solidly locked. This table can be lowered and then pushed in to form a totally flat bed. There is a protective cover for it. The chart drawer, as well as other storage, is in this table platform. This is what we redesigned to ensure that the table stayed into position when in use. All the hatches are fitted with ocean air blinds, so you can pull a solid blind across like this, or pull the other way and get a mosquito blind, or just leave it open to the air. These double layered blinds throughout the saloon are really important because they keep out the heat and the cold. They have a high insulation value and we simply wouldn't be without them, especially in the tropics. These are the controls for the heating and also the air conditioning systems. This is the AC control panel and it has some unusual features in it. Besides controlling all the AC on board, it offers the option for the aircon to be run from the mains, that's the generator if you like, or the mains, or a battery, and that's unusual. But it's only because we've got lithium batteries on board that we can afford to do that. And the second thing is hot water. Sometimes, when we're not heating the hot water with a starboard engine going, because it's got a califier, we want to run the port engine, but that does not heat the water. So for the times when you're sailing with no engines on, or with a port engine only on, you can still heat the water by simply switching this switch. And again, we can only do this because we have lithium batteries. The solar panel controller controls six MDOL PT controllers, which control six groups of solar panels to maximize the output from those solar panels.
It used to be that we had to go down into the sugar scoops to change over the water maker to supplying one side of the boat to the other. So we had remote controls fitted and now you can just switch over which tanks you want to send the water to from the water maker. Also, when you're actually pumping from the spare fuel tank, which is a 510 litre tank, which is in the bilges of the port bow, you can now direct the fuel to either the port or the starboard side. This makes fuel management much easier and again it's done remotely with this switch. The security system is extensive. It means someone even entering the boat and walking on the boat will alarm you. It can be set so that all the lights flash on the boat and the whole boat lights up as well as a siren that will wake up an entire anchorage. So anyone trying to interfere with the boat or the rib can actually alarm the home system and point to which boat in the anchorage that's being invaded. We had the props both replaced with the latest version of the Verifold prop. We also have a spare prop on board just in case we get caught in those remote places. In addition we've had rope cutters fitted. In 2010, Sullia was launched with a standard Jenica and Snuffer. We were told that this was the only choice, but recent developments have opened up easier ways of using a Jenica. And the easier something is to use, the more likely you are to use it. Our objectives were straightforward. In cockpit reefing and unreefing, one person only to be needed to change the sail between Screecher and Jenica and vice versa. Electric winch control if possible, improved ease of use, improved speed of use and improved safety with use. For a pound we decided to remove the two manual winches that were either side of the cockpit and replace them with electric winches. The problem here was that the lockers underneath those winches would be blocked by a normal electric winch but Harkin came to the rescue with the Unipower 900 series. These winches are designed from the outset as electric winches and the motor only sticks out just over four inches below the winch. Given that the depth of the glass here is some one and a half inches, we just had a few smooth inches of winch sticking out into the cupboards, which wasn't a problem. For reasons we're going to explain later, we installed a pad eye here. The reefing loop was brought back to the cockpit and could be controlled in one of three ways. The first was from the new Harkin winch when not on a starboard tack. The second was manually from the dolphin seat at the stern. And thirdly, by the main winch by passing through the loop shown here and then on to the main winch. The reefing line was controlled by this double block with jammers. This enabled the furler to be jammed in the open or closed position. In addition, the carver furling drum also had a lock on it. 
This could be activated by a short pull in the opposite direction on the reefing loop. The continuous loop reefing line was guided to the bow by these rather nice Selden fittings. The single block at the bow was changed over to a double block. The bow prod now sported the new carver top down furling drum. This has a swivel to which the tack of the sail is connected. The anti-torsion rope passes through the centre to attach to the drum. To fly the sail higher for visibility, two spectral loops join the tack to the swivel. And unreefing the sails whilst on the marina pontoon was going to be a challenge that required light winds from behind us, but not directly behind us. We also knew that it was not going to be possible to reef the sails as neatly as we could out at sea where we could control the tension. The Jenica had leached the dye from the dark blue to the orange, and there was nothing we could do to put it right. So from this point on, we named our Jenica Mucky. Here you can see how the anti-torsion rope is totally separate from the sail, leaving the sail to fly free as normal. On both the Screecher and the Jenica fitted both furling drums. The result was to be a simpler and easier system to use. A single retained pin was all that was needed to clip on the Screecher to the furling drum. There was no longer any need to even remove the drum from the bow prod. We now thought we had the best system but an event a few days later was to change things. In our trials at the marina, we found that wrapping the Jenica around a very thin line was not good. And what attracted us here were these plastic balls. Here you can see in principle how top-down furling works. Nice and tight, and then eventually the bottom just you know, rolls in and, you know, and, and curls up the rest of the wire. Profile have yet another nice additional feature, do-it-yourself installation. The anti-torsion rope is simply cut to length and looped inside this cable end fitting. No need for riggers to fit this one. It has the same easy connection at the top to the top swivel. For kindness to sail, plus resistance to back furling, the anti-torsion rope has multiple sail bearings. Occasionally, with a locked on bearing so that not too many balls sit on each other to resist turning. Now with the profile Spinex fitted onto the Carver Furling Drum, we have a solution to all the issues, plus an easy to use single pin connection for attaching the Screecher to the same drum. The top swivel also features a single retained pin connection. To release the pin, you simply pull on the yellow cord. This is the reefing line for the Screecher. It comes through a hole in the side deck there and then onto our main winch. And so we basically winch it back down um, when we wish to. Um, the sheet is coming back to a block at the back and then onto our new power winch. This is the shallow motor power winch that we installed. Um, we just cut around installed it at Fort Lauderdale. Now to explain that pad eye that we'd had fitted by the winch. This winch has no jammer for the Jenica or Screecher sheets, but needs to be used for the traveler loop as well. The solution was the Spinlock mobile jammer. The jammer is attached to the pad eye with a spectra loop and snap shackle. You click open the lid on the jammer and insert the line. In use, the pad eye takes all the load. There is a lever that you use to control the jamming function. At some $2,000,
This is a very expensive item, but the only solution we could find for the problem. Leisure Furl in Boom Furling offers a sail that is fully battened and shaped. They are a terrific system and we wouldn't dream ever of using any other system. Our current AGM battery bank consisted of six 185 amp batteries, totaling 1110 amp hours. These were to be replaced with just two 400 amp Jenison lithium phosphate batteries totaling 800 amp. Whereas we could only use 40% of the AGM batteries totaling 444 amp hours, we could use 80% of the Jenison's giving some 640 amp hours. That gave us an extra 50% increase in usable energy for half the weight. Also, with lithium batteries, you get out almost all the energy that you put in. This is not the case with other batteries. With other batteries, as they discharge, their voltage drops. This is not the case with lithium, which provides a constant voltage throughout its discharge cycle. When the batteries are left without charge, they exhibit a low storage energy loss over time. And of course, they take up less space. In our case, we have an extra cupboard under the seat. If, for any reason, the battery management system shuts off the batteries, these toggle switches reset them. The two control panels were fitted here, back to back. We had to have the alternator feed the battery management system in the main battery bank, and not the starter batteries. We configured the system so that the engine started from the main house bank, not the normal starter bank. The starter bank was charged from a DC charger coming from the main bank. This meant that we could always switch over to the starter batteries to start the engines. Oh. So as we prepare to say goodbye to Solier, one of the big parts is packing up 10 years of our personal belongings. And here you can see we're surrounded by crates, 26 of them, each of them weighing over 20 kilos. Now we've got to get them all off. Wish us luck. <laughs>